Hey, what's up guys? Mr. Chris here with infotainment.com. We have a pretty special upgrade today. We have a 2022 Cadillac Escalade that we're gonna be installing the option code DRZ, which is a rear view LCD mirror camera combo. It's also available for 21 and up Tahoe, Yukon, and Suburban. So all your GMC full-size uh, SUVs are able to get this option. One out of five, this install rates at about a four. Um, but don't let that discourage you. It's really not too bad. Uh, be patient, watch the video, pause it if you need. Uh, I'm gonna hopefully have some tips that'll help you out along the way. So let's get into the install. Getting into the parts that are included with your kit, you're gonna get your LCD screen and mirror combo. You're gonna get the line that you're gonna run to the back. So you get the image on that mirror and you have the camera housing, which also has a water squirter on it. So this water squirter, we're not hooking up on this Cadillac, uh, but if you want to hook that up as an option, let's say you live up north and you maybe have an issue with snow covering your camera lenses, you can hook that up. Even though we're not gonna be selling the water squirter, we will have some info on this upgrade on our website as well, like the parts that you need and everything under the listing for this upgrade. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as the parts that you're going to need for the actual camera and uh, mirror to work. What we are doing is also the emblem back there because you have to take everything apart um, to install this anyway. And we're just going to install this to match the front that we did on a prior install. And basically the front just pops out, you get a panel tool. A lot of the clips may break when you take it off, but if you're replacing it, it's not really going to make a difference. And uh, the rear, we're essentially just going to install that so it matches the front. And this one is not just an emblem, it's actually the button to open your lift gate. So we're going to be swapping that out at the same time. And we also did an upgrade earlier on the puddle lights that are in the mirror. So this is a, another super simple install. You just get a small flathead and stick it in the side and you can pop these puddle, uh, puddle lights out and the new ones with the Cadillac emblem plug right in and they pop right in. Um, so a couple of quick small upgrades to the Cadillac that uh, makes kind of a big difference at the end. Some of the less common tools that you may want to have on hand, these are not crucial to have but they definitely make the install easier. Uh, maybe a really long or extended panel tool, an assortment of panel tools, uh, because you're going to be removing a lot of, you know, interior plastic panels in the rear, especially some small uh, or precision pliers, a T20 Torx bit, um, a small flathead, and here I have a hole drilled in some angled steel, and I'll show you in the back where this is going to really come in handy but essentially the hole is around a 5 16 size, maybe slightly larger than 5 16 This is not crucial, but this helps out um, to remove some of the uh, rear panel clips that are in the back there. I'll show you where this goes once we get into the install. And then we got a, I'm using an impact with a seven millimeter and an eight millimeter socket. Um, if you don't have an impact, you can use just a standard wrench make sure to have a decent size extension because some of these nuts are kind of deep in there to get to. Um, also a light will help you out, especially in the rear panel area. And I have zip ties and a cutter. Now, because this is a Cadillac, it's a 2022, it's fairly expensive. You're gonna wanna protect um, the dash and you'll see why once we get in there. Uh, so I have just a basic furniture mat. You can use a towel or a sheet, whatever you have handy. These I like because they're like five bucks from Harbor Freight and you, you can kind of beat up on them. They take a lot of abuse and they're very soft, you know, very forgiving. And then I have some painter's tape. I'll also show you in the rear where we're gonna use this. Let's get into the truck and uh, get on with the install. All right, before we get started, you can see all the screen real estate that we have up here. There's a lot of fragile stuff that we don't wanna mess with up here, especially when we're banging around with tools and stuff. So I'm gonna throw my a little furniture mat over everything, just kinda 
Give me a layer of protection in here. All right, that should be good. And before I jump in, I'm also gonna protect the seat because this is a brand new vehicle. All right, from this point, you're gonna to wanna to grab your mirror, a small flathead or a panel tool. A panel tool with a hook on it like this is actually gonna help out really great here. And uh, what we're gonna to need to do is pull this mirror off. So to do that, we have to pop this center plastic piece off, which I can stick a flathead in there. And I think this pulls out and down, um, starting from the higher side first. You just pull that down, it'll slide right out. And now this piece is just held in with um, some panel retention clips in here. So to pull this off, what I like to do is stick my panel tool, the hook side, on the top side of this plastic. Now, I don't like to turn it and put any kind of pressure on the glass because um, it'll take a very small amount of pressure to, to crack that glass. So all I'm trying to do is stick this into the edge of the um, plastic cover here and pull down on the plastic only. Let's see. There you go. All right, and if you pop that free, um, you can see the clips that are holding it on. It's just clips going right around the top here. And what you're doing with your panel tool is just sticking this in here and it's pulling straight down, not putting any, any uh, pressure on that front window. All right, so folding the mirror down so you can see what we're doing here. We have our wire that plugs into our mirror. That's a single black connector, pull that out. Now all we have holding this on is a single T20 Torx right in the center there, right here. You just wanna loosen that, you don't have to pull it all the way off. You loosen it up a little bit and that'll allow it to be um, freed off of that mounting bracket. And we can set this mirror aside, we won't need that. All right, this new mirror um, has an extra wire on here. So you have your main plug um, that we removed earlier. And this extra wire here is where you're gonna plug that um, Fokker connector, that line uh, that's included with your kit. That's where you're gonna plug this uh, that into. And we're gonna run that to the rear. But everything else on here, you can go ahead, plug um, that connector back in and slide your mirror down pretty much just like you remove the other one and you can go ahead and just snug that that torque screw down all right from here you can go ahead and grab your line that's included with your kit and plug it into the mirror now that'll only go on one way so you can't get that wrong and you can see this little christmas tree clip here you can pop that right into place right above on the side of where that mirror is mounted. And now from here, what I'm gonna do is just route this up. Next to the other wires, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple zip ties on here and then we can start tucking this line. Now that we got those secured, I'm gonna start this kind of tucking this line up into the headliner a little bit. All right, now that I got the line tucked up in there a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and put all the uh, plastic panels back on around the mirror. Make sure that your line is not gonna get pinched by any of these clips that are in there. You can snap that back on. And set your mirror 
Mirror cover back in place. All right, make sure to wipe off all the fingerprints. All right, now our mirror is completely installed. Uh, this is pretty much all we have to do up here. And uh, we'll work this line up in this um, headliner through the creases all the way to the rear. You get to around here, should be able to kind of separate this with your panel tool. go now when you get to here you can pull down your weather stripping a little bit and just continue going on the top side of that headliner okay. all right now that we got our weather stripping pulled out of the way we'll continue down on the top side of that headliner that around the ape, uh, the B pillar actually. And once we got our wire out of the way, we'll go ahead and pop our weather stripping back on. All right, and working your way above the B pillar here, we can just kind of follow around and do the same thing we did working our way to the rear. Pull down our weather stripping. line up and above. Toss this to the rear. We can continue working this wire to the back here. Headliner is pretty flexible back here. You can just kind of tuck that wire up in there. All right, we'll jump to the back to get the rest of that. All right, and continuing towards the rear. We can just keep tucking. All right, now that we got our wire back to the rear here, what we're gonna wanna do is get this end to come through this uh, center grommet here, or this center um, wiring harness here. So this one on the left, this is actually, if you have that um, water squirter kit, this is where that water no nozzle is going. So uh, you'll need to actually access the top side of that. But again, we're not doing that upgrade for this install. So all we're gonna try and do is get this to run through here so we can run it into our lift gate. So in order to do that, we're gonna pull this uh, weather stripping back a little bit. I have a fairly long, maybe this is a two foot long zip tie that I'm gonna use to get the wire through there. Now you don't need the zip tie, you can do this without it, but this will make life a lot easier and you don't have to pull out uh, so many so many things to get the wire through there. So let's get started and pull this off. Now this weather stripping does have a little bit of adhesive on there. It's kind of real sticky. I don't know if you guys can see that there. So be careful not to touch that stuff. If you do, it's kind of a pain to get off your interior panels if it starts to stick all over everything. Um, maybe you want to wear some gloves. I'm going to try and avoid that as best as I can. Let's run this wire right around the headliner here. Pull this down. Now that we got our wire to kind of where that grommet is, we can pop this top off. 
Now the bottom grommet actually has two clips holding it on and uh, with a small flathead you depress those clips you can actually pull that grommet um, straight up out of there. The way I'm going to do this I don't need to do that I'm going to use the zip tie run it through our grommet here when it pops out on this side I'm going to tape it to the end of this line and we'll pull that through. Pull this down. I should be able to feel it. Yep, there it is. All right. That's all we really need. We'll go ahead and throw some tape on this. Now we can pull this through here. go a little tight but not too bad all right and you can go ahead and pull all the slack through we'll tuck the rest of this excess in here all right now we can Pop our weather stripping back on. All right, now that we got our wire where we want it, we can go ahead and start removing all of our rear tailgate uh, panels. Beginning with the rear panel here, or the uh, top panel rather, we can start popping all of these panels off and this should be fairly easy to do. This is a brand new Cadillac that we got here. I think it's got 30 miles or something on it. So all of our panels are pretty soft and flexible. Depending when you watch this video, if your um, interior panels have a little bit of age on them, these like to get real brittle real fast. So you might want to be a little bit more careful around the panels. A lot of times when these panels get brittle, this mount likes to snap right off and this whole section would stay on there but you would have this whole panel in your hand so uh, kind of feel around where the panel is feel where it's giving you resistance and you want to pull as close to those clips as possible uh, just to minimize any kind of plastic breaking or snapping off do that on this side Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this handles cover piece off. So in the center here, it's just a little plastic cover that's hiding a seven millimeter screw in there. We're going to need to pull that guy out. The next thing is basically just yanking the whole panel off. Now on these tailgate pieces, there's uh, or lift gate pieces, there's clips going up and um, back. So I like to start on the top side, start popping all the panels loose, and uh, or all the clips loose rather, and then once I get to this area here, kind of pop it down and out at the same time. Now, keep in mind when you're doing all of that, you have a button here with a uh, connector on the back of it. So once you finally release the whole panel, it's still gonna be attached to that. You're gonna have to unplug this to release it. go all right so once you pop this panel off you have your plug that has a safety connector on it so that little gray portion you're just gonna slide the security lock over 
and then you can press that same security lock down and that'll release your, uh, release your connector. Now we can set this aside. Once you pull your panel off, if you're lucky, all of your clips would have went with the panel. If not, you'll have a bunch of clips left on your lift gate like we do. Um, you'll have to pull these off with your panel tool and uh, reattach these to the plastic. And that's actually what the small set of needle nose pliers is for. So we'll go ahead and pull all of these off. All right, so save all these clips because we're gonna have to reinstall these on our panel. Um, but if you see here, this is how your clip kind of should look. If you can see those teeth in there, you can see the one that has those teeth all aiming uh, down and the one that the teeth looks like they're all bent out of shape. This is what most of your clips are gonna look like, those teeth all in weird directions. And this is where you grab your pliers and you're gonna wanna bend those back down into the right direction so you can get those on that on that panel again. So once you get all the teeth um, looking like this clip here, you'll be able to slide those back over um, to the protruding plastic pieces on that panel. Just make sure you bend all of them into the right direction. And that'll make life a lot easier when you try to slide these back over the over the plastic. Next, we want to remove these side panels and these are especially brittle. They're a different type of plastic, not as flexible as the, um, the full tail uh, lift gate panel that we just removed. So with these, I like to be very gentle and pull them directly from the clips. Uh, so basically, if you pull it back a little bit, you can kind of see in the gap there, you can see right where the clip is at and you can pop that free. So you want to pull basically or put pressure right where that clip is to avoid anything snapping. This one is right here, right there. And one more up here. All right. On this panel, same thing like the other panel that I warned you about, uh, what usually snaps off is either the base of this clip holder or the clip itself will be so brittle and it just shatters. So if you have a lot, uh, some sun damage or sun age on your vehicle, um, maybe it's a good idea to get some new ones of these. Uh, again, this Cadillac that we're installing this on is completely brand new, so these are all fresh. So right now we don't have a problem with any of this stuff breaking. All right, we're gonna do the, the same thing on this side. All right, now that we got all of our panels removed, I'm gonna go ahead and finish running this wire up. Now this is a pre-production harness, so we have a lot of length left on ours. Um, you probably won't have this much length on yours. So you won't have this much to run through there. Oh, we can go ahead and throw that grommet back in there. All right, so I'm just gonna follow this factory wire up in here all the way to where we need to be. All right, and I'm gonna come to a stopping point here. I'll coil up the rest of this. 
And I'll set this aside for now. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is uh, just set those wires in there for now and grab the painter's tape that I explained earlier. And we'll pull our lift gate down. Basically, we're gonna be removing this whole section of the lift gate, which has our Cadillac emblem on it. This entire uh, panel pops off after you remove a bunch of bolts and stuff. As it pops off, it can hang down and scratch up the um, painted surface of your, of your SUV. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some painter's tape all under here to prevent any kind of scratches from going on. I'm gonna do it right below this panel. Doesn't have to be anything pretty. You're just trying to add a little bit of protection from any kind of scratches, especially because it's black. You're going to see everything. Now that we got our tape applied, we're gonna remove a series of eight millimeter nuts and bolts from the uh, backside here. So underneath that side panel that we removed, there's two eight millimeter bolts. Working our way in, we have, I think probably six, six to eight, uh, eight millimeter nuts on the backside here. And then the uh, other side, you have another set of these eight millimeter bolts. We're just gonna pull everything out of here and set these aside for now. All right, and all the nuts that are on the inside here, they're black. Some are hidden um, inside of these uh, openings here. You have a couple behind this section here and uh, another one in the hole up here as well as up here. So just make sure you get all of those out. All right, now we're ready to remove that rear uh, valance with our Cadillac emblem on it. This is where you're gonna want an assortment of panel tools, uh, as well as that little angled metal, or if you got a piece of plastic with that hole in it, it doesn't really have to be very rigid. Just where we're gonna get it in here, it's gonna be really hard to see. So I'm gonna kind of do everything and I'm gonna walk you through it a little bit, but we'll show you when I pull the panel off exactly what I was doing back here. So basically you have some clips that you need to remove, there's one. So this here can get pulled up. And now, because the valance is kinda top heavy on here, you don't want it to re-clip itself in there. I'm gonna grab my little panel tool and kinda wedge it in here a little bit. All right, so these clips are the ones that you're trying to access. Now, this yellow one, you're actually not gonna see from or be able to access from the inside of the panel here. Uh, but this white one, you can access. And that's what I was actually pushing that tool over. I was depressing those clips on that uh, white clip here. And on this side, or the top side, wedging my panel tool in to pop that yellow one free. So that's, that's the goal here. And once you pop that, loose or free on both sides. I'm gonna keep this kind of kind of in here so so the panel doesn't reattach itself. Before we go ahead and start to pop off that panel, we want to remove a couple of cables that are coming through uh, that panel attached to your lift gate here. Um, there's two, we have a blue one and this black one right here. It's the, the wires in the center are the ones that you're gonna be concerned with. But you got a security tab on each one. It's that little red slider. We'll slide that red slider to the side and depress that button in the center and pop that off. And same thing for the other cable. There we go. And you'll notice up on the lift gate itself where those wires are coming through, there's actually a plastic grommet that's snapped in. We can leave that attached for now because once we pop that rear panel off, you want something to catch it. You want something to kind of, you know, so the panel doesn't come flying off of the vehicle. 
All right, moving over to the driver's side. We'll access that clip in there. There it is. All right. All right, and this is where you can see a really long panel tool may come in handy. There we go. Now we should be able to pop this free. Oops. There we go. Oops. You can see our tape comes in handy here. Now we can go ahead and remove that plastic grommet. And with my right arm, I'm gonna be supporting that whole thing so it's a, uh, it's not gonna come crashing down. All right, and we're free. Now we can pull this whole shroud away from the vehicle. And this is where we're gonna grab our emblem and our new camera and we'll head over to the bench. All right, so with our panel out and on the workbench here, I can give a little better explanation of what I was doing back there. So basically these white clips that are on the top side and the bottom side of this panel are the ones that you can kind of access in there by sticking your arm in there. And what I was doing was basically depressing uh, my tool here on these clips, allowing me to pop this free from the outside. Now. The yellow clips, um, you can't access. So once you pop these white ones free, I was able to pull it uh, away from the vehicle a little bit, just enough to allow me to pop this free in between there. And the only reason I'm being so uh, gentle around these is um, if you go and just yank the whole thing out, um, maybe it'll come out, maybe these won't break, but a lot of times they do, because a lot of times these are just like a, a little bit brittle from the, from the sun. So I was just trying to be as gentle as possible so I didn't get anything to break on me. But now that this panel's out, we're ready to remove our camera and our Cadillac emblem and um, lift gate button. So to do that, we will disconnect our wires here. You got a little red security tab on that one. You press the button in the center and remove that. And you have this camera line here that we will be removing. Uh, and replacing this. We'll be taking this one off of, the, uh, off of this housing and installing it into our new one. And lastly, we have to re uh, remove this cable that's connecting our liftgate button. Same type of little red clip on there. Right in the center, pull the clip to the side, press the button down, and these will pop right out. Now we have two eight millimeter nuts holding the camera housing on and the same thing for our emblem. So we can go ahead and remove all of these. And you can use a socket or in my case, I'm gonna use a box wrench. You got one on either side here. All right, now besides those two nuts on here, you do have some plastic clips on the sides that has to, has to be pressed in in order to pop this down and out. So I'll try and do that with my fingers here. There we go. And basically these are those clips. They're not very big, but um, they're kind of held up in there with those clips. So just press those down and you can pull this whole thing out. All right, comparing our new housing to the old housing, you'll see our new one has a empty location for our previous uh, or our old camera to be mounted into the new housing. So we'll take these torques off. You do need a T15 Torx bit besides the T20 that we used earlier. Pop that mounting cover off. 
and out. Set that aside, you won't be using that again. When you pull this out, take note of the location of the sticker and basically you're just gonna reinstall it in the exact position that it was sitting in um, your old housing here. We'll remove the T15s on here. And we'll grab our camera. The camera line gets fed through the hole in the bracket. Then make sure to position that camera in the same orientation that we had it in. And it'll take a little wiggling, but we'll get that back in there. Now there's a couple of pins here on the sides. Make sure um, those pins go through that little mounting plate on here. And uh, our cameras look like they're lined up properly. We'll go ahead and put our torques back in there. All right, now we're ready to pop this back into our lift gate panel here. And it should clip into place just like that. Then we can reinstall our two eight millimeter nuts that we removed. Now we can plug our factory backup camera back in. Slide that little security lock over. And with this line here, what I'm gonna do is cut a small hole into this grommet and feed this line through kind of on the side of this um, main harness here. So I'll do that now. I'm gonna use my flush cut. Make a small little hole. It doesn't have to be very big. It is rubber, so you can just force it in there. I'll do the same thing on this side. All right, now we can plug our other connector back in, slide that security lock over. And now as you see, we lifted up the panel and our factory emblem pops right out of there. You can get your new emblem if you chose to swap yours out. And slide that in. And get the factory eight mils and put those back over. And don't forget to plug your new emblem and tailgate release back in as well. Cause that would suck to put everything back together and have to take it all apart again to get that plugged in. All right, so we have our new camera here with our factory backup camera. And this is where that um, water squirter is so if you did opt to hook this up this is where the water comes out shoots and cleans off your lenses but again we're not hooking that up in this in this video here but you can see right back here that's where the that's where the line would get hooked up to all right before I put that panel back on we got a little bit of dust and dirt under here so I'm just gonna be a nice guy and clean it off real quick All right, now we're ready for our panel. All right, so where we're gonna start, we're gonna grab our panel, kind of center it up here, and I'm gonna feed these wires back through our opening and make sure to include that new wire that we just installed in that hole. Kind of tight now, but fits no problem. And we'll take our piece here. And you wanna make sure that seal goes up underneath the window. And then you can line up those clips 
and pop those clips back in. All right, now we're ready to work back on the inside, reinstalling all of the uh, previously removed eight millimeter nuts. All right, now on the inside here, like I said, it is a pre-production harness. Your harness will be shorter than ours, but if you do have any leftover um, excess wire, you can just coil that up, zip tie it, grab the other end of that cable that we fed through the grommet, and plug in your new, oops, a new line here. All right, we can plug in the remaining two cables that we got here, and I'll zip tie this main bundle of wires right to this factory harness here. Make sure it stays out of the way. All right, now we can pop all of our eight, eight millimeters back up in to our lift gate. We have eight nuts on the back and four bolts that go into the sides, two on each side. All right, so we got all of our nuts back into our lift gate. Now we're ready for our interior panel. And with your clips, we had these uh, little teeth in there bent previously, like we explained earlier. Um, basically, you want them to be aiming in the direction of the end of the clip. So when you snap them or when you press them back over that plastic nub on there, those teeth prevent it from backing out. That's the idea anyway, they always come off. But uh, at the very least, we're gonna pop those back in place. Uh, we had four pop off on ours. We'll go ahead and place the clip right over that little plastic nub. And it should slide on pretty easily. If you need to though, you can press it down just a little bit more, make sure it's nice and secure on there. And uh, we'll do this for the remaining three. Looking at the bottom of our panel before we um, go ahead and snap this back on, you'll see these bottom clips that I also mentioned earlier, how they're aiming in a different direction from uh, the rest of the clips. So because of that, it makes it a little tricky to pop these in. Um, so what I'm gonna try and do is pop these on first and then kind of roll that panel up and into place and then pop the other ones in. That's the idea anyway, we'll see, uh, we'll see how I do when I get it up there. All right, and then lastly, don't forget to plug in your lift gate, your lift gate button before you snap everything back on. Make sure to snap that gray clip back over to the side. Now we can snap our clips back in. All right, looks good. All right, now we can snap in the rest of our lift gate panels. All right, and then the last piece right in the center. All right, now we can get these ex uh, outside plastic panels. Make sure you pull your tape back so you don't pinch that in between this panel and you can go ahead and snap this back on. All right, and do the same thing on the driver side. Lastly, we'll put this single seven millimeter back in to our handle and grab our plastic cover and throw that back on as well. All right, now we're ready to remove the tape and test out the camera. All 
right, now's a good time to try that button out. Looks like everything's working. And that emblem came out fantastic. All right, now that we got the vehicle back together, we can go ahead and try it out. We'll start her up. All right, and you can see we got our image on the rear view mirror. And uh, you are not impeded by the rear seats at all. So if you have a lot of stuff loaded up um, in your vehicle, if you got your kids in the back, you can always have a clear image of what's behind you. Now, if you want to switch back to just a regular mirror, you can just flip that uh, lever on the bottom, flick of a wrist, and you're back to the uh, back to the image. All right, and there you go. With uh, just some basic hand tools and a few hours, you can have this incredible upgrade for your vehicle. Um, again, this fits the Tahoe, Suburban, Yukon, and the Escalade 2021 and up. So for more upgrades like this, check us out at infotainment.com.